Hey everyone, my name is Rui and we are here. This is going to be the final week, week number 12 of the APA D-League, and we are up against Dr. Slacking and his Bolin Bovines, and uh, this is an interesting matchup. He is more or less out of contention. He is still in contention if he beats me by at least a 4-0, but he's going to try to 6-0 me for sure in order to try to stay in contention, and for me, I had a little bit more of a laid-back build, um, I believe playoffs should be guaranteed for me although i would like to play for a little bit of higher seed i think the eight and four record would be a little bit more uh desirable for what i want to try to do here but regardless we're going to see a salazzle dnc thunderous uh tank growth bronzong and uh slow bro okay so okay what does this mean what does this mean well, first of all, it means that my Scarfed uh, Zygarde outspeeds everything except for the Salazzle, but he would have to be max speed, although he probably would just for my uh, Zygarde. It means... What did he not bring? Let's see if we can take a look at what he didn't bring, but um, my specially defensive Nidoqueen should be able to deal with his Salazzle decently well. Um... So I don't know what I want to lead off with. Part of me just wants to lead off with my Greninja. I feel like my Greninja is the safest lead. Uh, no ground type, actually. So my Galvantula should be reasonably free. Um, did not bring the Hydreigon, which is pretty huge. Uh, didn't bring the Miltank, which is pretty huge. No Decidueye. And no Tornadus. I think I will lead with Galvantula here. Now, I did make a mistake in, in, in a very recent match where I said he didn't have a ground type, but he did. So, what is his ground type on his draft? Um, Mamoswine. Did not bring the Mamoswine. Okay, that is really interesting, actually. But, um, that, I think, helps out my, my matchup decently well, I think. Although, yeah, it's going to be a super interesting matchup here. See, I thought, I thought that he would leave things behind in order to, you know, kind of deal with my Mega Gallade. And I thought that that would open the door a little bit for my Greninja if I left my Mega Gallade on the bench. So, here we are. Here's Galvantula against a Bronzong. Now, I would honestly love to just kind of gauge damage here. Against a Bronzong. I really do just want to Volt Switch here. Although, I think Thunder is reasonably free here. I think Thunder is reasonably free here. I want to collect Thunder. We do land the Thunder. And if it's max special defense, then I should be doing just under half. And yeah, we do right around half. So I think that means just... No, it means it has to be pretty specially defensive. Maybe it's mixed defensive some kind. I think it has to be like mixed defense. Um, part of me says that Volt switching is reasonably free. He does have the thunderous potential switch in. Although I could click Bug Buzz right now. I don't think I'm too, too worried about what this thing wants to do. I think Bug Buzz would be a really interesting play just to see what wants to come in right now. I'm going to click Bug Buzz. I don't have any removal, but I didn't think removal was going to be that big of a deal, even though I do have two mons that are weak to it. But this is a much more offensive team that I built and much less of like a pivoting around type of team. I think what I think for the most part, whatever's going to be in is going to want to stay in and, you know, kind of deal damage against whatever the heck is in front of it. My instinct tells me that he would want to um, preserve this Bronzong, but maybe he doesn't. Maybe he just wants to risk a second Thunder taking this thing out potentially. But I did almost exactly 50% by the looks of it, and I don't know what he is and is not willing to risk in this situation. I guess I just have to see in this situation. I don't know. I don't really know what he would want to do. He does withdraw. So I feel like Bug Buzz was a decent play here. Goes into the Thunder, so it will take a little bit of damage. And we do get to gauge damage because if a Life Orb Hidden Power Ice... It, oh, that's that looks very much like a, like a follow-up Hidden Power Ice should be able to do it. Um, and I believe, oh, I think I made a huge mistake on this build. Okay, yeah, I made some type of huge mistake here. I accidentally made this a 
How, how many natures did I mess up? I made this the absolute wrong nature. I'd accidentally made this a rash nature, so I don't outspeed in this situation, but, I, but I'm also not concerned about being O-code here. I think I can pretty freely HP ice here. I'm, and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna see whatever he tries to hit me with. Go, goes for a U-turn, okay. So HP ice is gonna hit something. And I guess this Galvantula just stays in. This Galvantula, it looks like it's gonna be able to switch in one more time. But, um, yeah, I messed up by making this thing rash nature. That's honestly a huge mistake on my part, although it does kind of give me a special attack boost, which I guess was helpful against the Bronzong. I don't know if he's going to expect a Hidden Power Ice. I'm, I'd be very curious as to what comes in here. Yeah, the Salazzle... Uh, as soon as I got to a second to think about it, the Salazzle did make the most sense. Uh, so now he knows what I was trying to do in that situation, but I'm pretty darn upset with myself because I think I just claimed a KO if I had made my Galvantula fast enough, although... Although, he should have known that I was Modest Life Orb from the overall damage that I was doing. Although, <sighs> there's no reason for this thing to be rash. 100% no reason for this thing to be rash. Although, that's okay. Um, I still think that my Nato Queen is a pretty dedicated switch into this. It is also very hot, and I, and I feel like I look sweaty. Uh, I don't have the fan on for obvious reasons, but uh, I probably should. I have to play a match like right after this, and I probably should turn on a dang fan. Now, I'd be very surprised if he tries to nasty plot him in my face. Sorry about that. I'd be very surprised if he does try to nasty plot in my face, but I think I have to assume that he would, and I have to click Earth Power right now. Uh, goes for a Toxic, so that's a very interesting play. Corrosion Toxic for my Needle Queen. I mean, it's an interesting play. I don't quite know where that gets him in the longer game, but I like it. I like... I like how interesting it is. Um, he does have a very obvious Bronzong switch in, potentially. He does have a very obvious Tangrowth switch in, potentially. Um, or the, or the Thunderous. Um, but I do have follow-up plays for no matter what he wants to bring in, so I don't know, quite know what he would want to do. I really want to make some type of prediction and click... Oh, also, I don't know. I have Ice, Be oh, ice Punch over Ice Beam. I don't know what that's it. That has to be a, a missed in. I, or, I was originally toying with, like, a physical Nita Queen, but I decided against it, and I think that should, should definitely be Ice Punch. Uh, ice Beam, I should say. Regardless, part of me just wants to get a Marox. Part of me thinks I should just... I don't think I can let this thing get up another sub. I don't think I can let this thing get up another sub, although... I really do want to double here. I really do want to double here. I think I have to Earth Power, though. Because if I let this thing sub up again, then that'd be pretty darn bad for me. What would I go out into? What would I go out into? No, I have to make the safer play. I think I can take one more round of Toxic Damage. Fine, yeah. Yeah, he knew. He, he knew that I could potentially try to make a play here, so... Uh, I mean, it's not like he's going to be able to sub long enough for this Toxic Damage to be able to do much. And no matter what, um, this Nita Queen is really meant to, to, to be to be a counter to the Salazzle. So even if even if I have to give up my Nita Queen to counter the Salazzle, I think that's ultimately a fantastic trade on my side. Um, given how much work my uh, potential... Um, uh, how much work Zygarde has potential to do in this matchup. So now, if he's going to make a play, he might go out into the Bronzong, if anything, right now. Yeah, it does withdraw. Um, I think I'm fine. I, like, I, obviously, I'm a turn behind on this entire interaction, but I don't think I mind it in this situation. I think, ultimately, uh, this is fine. Although, I do want to get a rock. Yeah, I think, I think this is also pretty free rocks right now. That'll leave the Salazzle pretty weak when it comes in. So I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do that. Um, it'll leave the Salazzle pretty weak and the Thunderous pretty weak. So I don't have really have to hit those necessarily for super effective damage. And I think that would open the door up for uh, Scarf Zygarde Crunch in the later game. And also it would leave the door open for, I don't know, Galvangela to get some, to get some revenge hits later in the match. But uh, I think ultimately... Uh, it does my team pretty good in this situation. Now, yeah, that's a lot of damage. But, um, I think for sure I would want to keep this thing for a little bit of... A little bit of... Fodder? I don't think... Hmm. What I really want to do is go into Aromatease. And then double into... 
Um, possibly Greninja. Greninja is a really good potential double target. I could just let this thing go down as well. I could also go into Galvantula here, right? Galvantula is just above half. Oh no, it's just under half. Yeah, Galvantula might not be able to take that. Earthquake. Yeah, it does too much. I think I'm going to make that play and go out into... Into Aromatisse. Now... Now, my Kirim, I believe, is pretty physically defensive. Which was for a couple things on his draft. Goes into a Slow King. Okay. That's interesting. He's going to Toxic me, which is going to be not great. But I don't think I mind if I can get a Calm Mind or two up. Or at least get up a Wish. I think getting up a Wish would be fun here. No, getting... Catching this thing off guard with a Calm Mind Thunderbolt would also be interesting. But I also don't want to get toxic. I also don't want to get toxic. What could I potentially wish up? I could wish up Galvantula. That'd be fun. I'm going to click Calm Mind here. I don't know if you would want to stay in, in this situation. So now, again, my... What I was thinking about was my Kiram, I believe, is physically defensive. Oh no, my Kiram is just max HP, max special attack. I remember now. I remember now. It's max attack modest. Um, so, it'd be a fun time against Thunderous. It's, it, has a, it has a really fun time against the slower threats, but it's his faster threats. His slightly faster threats that I don't have to really worry about. Obviously, the, the Diancie is going to be a huge, huge problem in, um, to match up against. Um, but once the Salazzle goes down, I think Kiram has a really, really fun time. Kiram has a fun time against... Is it is meant to be somewhat of a breaker against his um, slower threats. I think getting burned would be best case scenario. I do get burned. Okay, that is fantastic, I think. That is fantastic, I think. It's going to nullify my leftovers, but... I'm going to be able to get, set up a wish right now and set up and at least get up one more calm mind after this. He could go into Salazzle, but um, Salazzle would allow me to Thunderbolt, and he could try to sub up against me. It would at least nullify his ability to. That would put me at plus one, and it would nullify his ability to just sub up against me. So I think I take out that Salazzle in that interaction. Um, so that would be fun. But this is already looking to be a long match. It's already we're already ten minutes in, and it's not like it's been uh, we've taken like too few turns or anything like that. But uh, I can tell just from the way that we're playing that this is going to be a bit of a longer match. I it's it's honestly feeling like one of those matches that's gonna have a really long beginning and middle game, and then and then the end game is just going to be where Mons just drop like flies, and uh, and a, and a winner emerges like super late in, in that end game. But for right now, I feel okay where, where, with where we're at. What if you were trying to predict anything by clicking Scald in that situation? I don't think so. I don't think so. It does withdraw, uh, so allows me to get up the Wish there. Although the Bronzong confuses me. Maybe he thinks I can't hit the Bronzong? But I think I just Calm Mind up on, on this thing. Maybe he's trying to game out what my set is, and he's thinking maybe I'm like Moonblast Psychic. Uh, that, that, that'd be a much more like standard Aroma T set. But, uh, oh, and I outspeed this thing. I'm pretty sure that I'm like, uh, did I even, I, I'm pretty sure I made this thing negative speed EVs. Goes for an earthquake. Not negative speed. Oh no, I do have 31 EVs. Okay, that's, that's a definite mistake on my part. I am a negative speed nature, but I really meant to make this thing, uh, zero speed IVs as well. That's a mistake on my part. But, uh, we do get back up to full, and I think I can't afford not to get up another Wish. Um, but, be, but this Bronzong being here will allow me to get up to plus three, potentially plus four. Um, and no matter what, even if he switches out in this situation, it will give me a free opportunity to attack something else. But, regardless, he's gonna stand and click Earthquake. I think this gets me to at least plus four. I think this gets me to at least plus four. But plus three for sure. Like, I'm going to get to plus three on this next turn no matter what happens. 
I'm going to try to be a little bit more aggressive on these combines, but uh, I think I think him not burning me, well, I think him burning me and not being able to toxic me, I think that's going to hurt him in the end. But this explosion, wow. Wow, that's huge. Oh, wait, don't I have a wish up in the air? I think I have a wish up in the air. I think he picked the wrong turn to do that. Um, he could have done it on my wish turn. On, on the turn that I would have gone for wish. Because, um... I don't think that made all the sense in the world. I don't know. Maybe he didn't know that I was max defense, but he should have been gauging damage. Been able to tell that I wasn't... Um... That I was max defense, but I am max defense call miner. And now I'm at plus three, plus three. I believe. Maybe he was just doing that for the momentum play. But I'm going to start putting plus three, plus three into the calcs here. And this thing can leech seed me for sure. This thing can knock me off for sure. But I don't think I might. I think I can call mine up a few more times, right? I'm, I am at plus three, plus three. And I don't think getting leech seeded is... I think I don't think it matters. I'm going to click call mine. Goes for a power whip. That's super interesting. Again, I am max defense. And that does more damage than I would like. But, uh... I don't think I mind. I don't know. Okay, so so Slacking and I were talking. I'm going to break the fourth wall a little bit. But Dr. Slacking and I were talking in DMs, right? And uh, he came to me and said, like, look, I'm out of playoffs. You you have your spot secured. Do you want to just bring, like, more fun sets? And and uh, I told him, you actually do have a chance if you 6-0 me, right? And, uh, and then we went through, like, all these different scenarios, right? And... Oof, I might not take another power whip. That, that could have been a mistake. But in the end, he said that he wanted a, a real match against me. So I brought, like, some pretty try-hard sets, I guess. Now that now that I see this, th these are pretty try-hard sets. I have to hope that I take this. I don't think I take this, though. Let me just see. I haven't been gauging damage that well. If I did get two... If I did get two... Uh, greedy, then I deserve to lose, honestly. I absolutely think I deserve to lose. Yeah, this should take me out. I could switch out here, but I don't think I get to wish up on anything else. What would I want to switch into? Galvantula? Does Galvantula take a hit after rocks? No, wow. T yeah, Tangrowth is reasonably strong. Tangrowth has a 100 attack stat. Tangrowth has the same attack stat as Zygarde. Yeah, I think I have to stay in here. This is really not worth switching out at all. I deserve... I, I got super greedy here. I deserve... I deserve to uh, go down right now, yeah. I messed up big time. I'm even going to message that. I messed that up big time. So, I'm going to go I'm going to go into Galvantula, I think. No, I can go into I can go into Kiram. Then that would bait in the slow bro and then I could signal beam the slow bro. It could also bring in the Diancie, which I would not want. But then if the Diancie comes in, I, then I bring in um, Needle Queen, and then that would allow in my Greninja. I think that's I think that makes sense to me. It, because if I bait in the Slowbro, then I can Signal Beam that, and if I bait in the Diancie, then I can uh, sack off the Needle Queen and go into and go into um. And I can go into Greninja. Do we see the Diancie? This, is, this should be the... Yeah. After Rocks... I feel like this has a chance to KO. Like, I know this is resisted, but this is a very strong boy. This is a very strong boy. Yeah, there it is. So now I'd be really interested in... What he brings in here. Diancie's his best play. 
Diancie has to be his play. Unless he wants to try and talk to me with Slowbro. Man, I'm kind of upset about how I played Aromatisse. Aromatisse could have won this match, too. That would have been so much fun if Aromatisse won. But yeah, if I just clicked Wish one turn earlier, I had no, I had no reason not to other than just being greedy. And I was greedy. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. It made no sense to be that greedy. It made no sense. Although, I, I, I wouldn't have been in the best spot regardless. But... Um... I think, ultimately, that would have allowed... I'm upset that I didn't get to get one hit off on the tank growth, I think is the best way to put it. Um, you should know that I'm not Scarfed or anything like that. I would have gone for a different move if I was Scarfed, but it goes for a sub. Wow, he's really calling me out. He's really calling me out right now. Because I could have stayed in and clicked Earth Power, right? If I... I guess. Let's see. Diancie. If it was... Let's say it was just a max HP Diancie, right? Kieran clicking Earth Power... It wouldn't have done enough, but I would have been fine with that damage. And that's if it was max HP. If it wasn't max HP... Then... Man, I got straight up called out. I think this is the perfect moment to give up Galvantula for Bug Buzz damage. Um. Uh, no, no, this is a different Galvantula set. This one's not Scarfed. So now I have to give up one of my Mons at outspeeds. Um. Zygarde makes the most sense because Zygarde is always going to get stopped by the Tangrowth. Yeah. Zygarde has to get off a Thousand Arrows, go down, and then that'll allow my Greninja to Scald for the KO. He has no reason to switch out here. Uh, I am Scarfed, but... Yeah, this is going to allow my Greninja in, and Greninja should theoretically outspeed his entire team, and has super effective... Sorry about that again. He clicked Moonblast, uh, took me out. Uh, we did take out the sub, which was great, but now uh, Greninja has super effective damage for the rest of his teams. Even if Greninja has to um, get sacked off to... Uh, even if Greninja forces me to sack off other mons on my team uh, to be able to take this mon on, I don't mind in this situation because... Um, I should potentially win. It's going to depend on whether or not the Thunderous is Scarfed, which it could very well be. The Thunderous could very well be Scarfed, but if it's not Scarfed, um, actually, all, all the Thunderous did was was U-turn out, so it is very likely Scarfed. If that's true, then I need my Kyurem to be able to take it on. I need my Kyurem to be able to take it on. But, it does withdraw. That's super interesting. Goes into... Tangrowth. We'll just have to see how much, uh, how much chip damage I'm able to get off. So it's not assault vested. Oh no, we should have done about twelve percent because of the rocks chip as well. I think what I have to do is U-turn into Kiram. I think I have to U-turn into Kiram. And yeah, I think that damage should pretty much confirm that this thing is assault vested. But just being able to go into Kiram and click Roost here. Should be what I need to do. Goes for the knockoff. Uh, does Ice Beam do enough in this situation? Ice 
Ice Beam does enough in case the Diancie wants to switch in here. I think I have to click Roost, though. I think I have to click Roost, because I need to be able to, I need a way to take on the Scarf Thunderous. Oh, this is, this is best case scenario. He could Toxic me, which would be pretty bad, but this, I think, is best case scenario. This might just be best case scenario. This is going to allow me to signal beam here. And no matter what, something's going to take a uh, pretty big damage coming into uh, on this turn. Okay, that is a 2 KO. Let's go for the Scald. And I think straight up I just click Roost here. Do I get to, he just burned me, okay. Um... Okay. He could switch out here. Which really honestly just makes me want to click Earth Power. Actually, Ice Beam also does it. But... If he goes into the Diancie, then that puts me in a really bad spot. I'm going to click Ice Beam because no matter what, if he stays in, then that'll allow me to roost up on the next turn. Yeah, okay. Let's go for the Psychic. And I think he knows that if I'm max HP, then all that he needs is the is burn chip in order for my moon in, in order for his moon blast to KO me. I think that's why he made that sequence of plays. But if he knows that, then he probably should have gone into Diancie now. I just want my Kirim to be literally as healthy as possible to take primarily to take on the Thunderous. I think. I think if he does ever bring in the Diancie, I sock off the Gargantula immediately and then keep this thing around in order to deal with the Thunderous. And I think that ends up with a win for me. Uh, this is this turn is going to leave me the healthiest that I could possibly be. And... From there, I can just click Ice Beam. Special Defense Drop is pretty bad. Special Defense Drop is pretty bad. But, yeah, now I can just click Ice Beam. And I think that brings in the Diancie. Once the Diancie comes in, I sock off Galvantula. Then that allows in my Greninja. And then it's just... And then... Then he might have to sack off Tangrowth in that situation. Which means that which me which would allow him to go into his scarfed thunderous and then it's a head game as to whether or not i switch out into if i switch out into kirim and he clicks u-turn then i think he might win in that situation if he stays in no he always clicks u-turn because that's going to do the most damage against greninja but then I could just Scald, and that would take out the Diancie coming in. Oof, that's going to be a huge head game. Regardless, I don't think there's any situation in which I don't sack off the Gavantula here. I don't think there's any situation in which I don't sack off Gavantula here. But I think it's going to come down to that 50-50 a couple turns down the line. If he sets up a sub, I'd be... Bro. I'm blown away. I think he wins. I'm blown away. I'm blown away, man. I'm just gonna say GG, man. That was a monster play. I don't know what else to say, man. I don't know what to say. He knew... If I had Shuriken, maybe that would maybe that would be my saving grace here. I'm blown away. I'm truly, truly blown away.
I'm sorry, I'm just speechless, because, like... <sighs> if I had clicked Ice Beam... Well, no, I guess, I guess, yeah, if I had clicked Ice Beam... Then I break the sub... And then he just takes me out the next turn, so I guess, I guess it was a safe play. I guess that was a super safe play, but... It's unfortunate, man. Um... Yeah, because... Yeah, because I was never in a position... If I had stayed in, then yeah, we, then yeah, he could just click sub until, until I switch out. No, it, no, if he had clicked, if, if he had kept clicking sub until he couldn't make a sub anymore, then, yeah, I should have respected the sub play. If I had attacked, then he wouldn't have been able to make a sub the next turn, and then I make the Gavantula play at, once he's forced to attack. That would have been the much better play. Yeah, so I, I possibly choked that game away. I don't know, man, but I think that was a monster play. Regardless, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna be thinking about that one for a while. Uh, we'll be back again with, uh, ideally the EP play uh, Academy playoffs, um, as well as the MPL playoffs coming really, really soon with the actual, uh, and I believe the final week that, uh, might have just come out, but, uh, UBL coming up really, really soon as well, and, uh, some other stuff coming very, very soon. With that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be once again out.